You're living in the 1930s. The world is in chaos because of the Great Depression. People are losing jobs and money, and no one knows just how bad things are. Then comes an economist named Simon Kuznets. He creates something amazing called GDP, or Gross Domestic Product. This is like a giant report card for the economy, helping everyone understand what's going on. Kuznets was given the huge task of figuring out how to measure the health of the economy. It was like trying to solve a giant mystery without any clues. But he was ready for the challenge. In 1934, Kuznets presented his groundbreaking report to the U.S. Congress. And just like that, Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, was born. This new tool changed how we understand economies forever like finding a missing piece to a very important puzzle. And that's how Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, started. It changed how we understand economies forever. Pretty cool, right? Now let's talk about what GDP is and why it's so important. What is GDP? Let's say you're running a small, simplified country that only sells apples. In the first year, you sold $1,000 worth of apples. By the second year, you sold $1,200 worth. On the surface, it looks like the country is thriving, right? But just like discovering the dog ate the last piece of your puzzle, there's more to this story. One night, your country faced a big problem, a sudden invasion of apple-eating worms. They rushed through the apple orchards, eating a lot of the apples. The result? There were fewer apples left to sell. The impact on the community was immediate. Farmers were in a frenzy, trying to protect what was left of their crops. Local markets saw a sharp decline in apple availability, causing worry among citizens who relied on apples for their daily meals. Schools even had to cancel their famous apple pie baking contest, much to the disappointment of the students. With fewer apples available, the price per pound went up to 55 cents. So, is your country truly more productive or are you just selling at higher prices? To understand true productivity, we need to look beyond the numbers. That's where GDP, or gross domestic product, comes into play. GDP measures the total value of all goods and services produced within a country. It includes everything from your morning coffee to complex machinery. Now, let's explore how GDP is measured. There are three main ways to measure GDP, output, expenditure, and income. Let's break these down using our apples example. First, we have the output method. The total value of all the apples produced gives us the output GDP. Think of it as counting all the apples in your country to see how much you have. Next, we have the expenditure method. Consider everything spent on apples by households, businesses, and the government. Add to that the money spent on importing apple seeds and exporting apples, and you get the expenditure GDP. It's like tallying up all your receipts after buying and selling apples to see how much has been spent. Finally, there's the income method. This method sums up all the income generated from the apple sales, including the salaries of apple pickers, the profits of apple sellers, and the rent from apple orchards. It's like adding up everyone's earnings from the Apple business to see how much money is flowing into the country. Now, why is this important? When GDP goes up, it's like the cake getting bigger. People are happier because there are more slices for everyone, more jobs, higher wages, and better services like schools and hospitals. But if the GDP cake shrinks for two quarters, it's called a recession, which means fewer jobs and smaller paychecks. Let's take the UK as an example. Recently, their GDP grew by 0.4% in May 2024, bouncing back from zero growth in April. This indicates the economy is recovering. But during the COVID-19 pandemic, the UK faced its worst recession in over 300 years. How does GDP affect you and me? Simple. If GDP is growing, people earn more and spend more which means more tax revenue for the government to spend on public services like schools, hospitals, and roads. But remember, GDP isn't perfect. It doesn't account for unpaid work, like caring for children, or the environmental costs of production. 
and GDP growth doesn't always mean everyone is better off. Wealth could be unevenly distributed beyond GDP. That's why economists also look at GDP per capita, which divides GDP by the population to give a better sense of individual well-being. For instance, even if the UK's GDP increases, if the population grows faster, people might not feel richer. Some experts argue for alternative measures that include well-being and environmental sustainability. For example, since 2010, the UK has also measured well-being, considering factors like health, education, and personal finances. Now it's time for a quick challenge. Let's see how sharp you are. Which method of measuring GDP adds up all the things you and the government buy? Is it A, output, B, expenditure, or C, income? Type your guess in the comments below. Thanks for joining me on this GDP journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And let me know in the comments what economic concept you'd like to explore next. Until next time, keep exploring the world of economics.